All right, hey guys, Willie D1 here. Um, Bama fans, I wanted to reach out to you guys. I'm, I'm a diehard Clemson fan. I think uh, I told you all that. And I am a uh, Clemson alum, uh, but I'm not here to troll. I'm here to talk a little ball here. So um, I've had the great fortune of getting to see Coach Saban speak a couple of times and many of his assistants. And, you know, what Alabama does defensively is incredibly innovative. And there's some great stories behind it that I'd like to uh, tell you guys. Now, I was planning on going into cover seven and Rip and Liz coverage, which are Coach Saban's babies. I was going to go in, into detail in those. But seeing it's today's game day, and I had a bunch of work come up that I didn't expect. Um, I'm going to kind of keep it shorter and just kind of go through the base Alabama scheme. So what's really interesting to me is that the two greatest coaches at both the college level and the NFL level have a history together in Nick Saban and Bill Belichick. And a lot of this history is based around this defense that they came up with, right? And, you know, we tend to get lost sometimes in in the great quarterbacks that these guys have had, right? Obviously, Tom Brady with the Patriots has been one of the best, if not the best, to ever do it. And then Bama's had, you know, Matt Jones and, and Tua. But when these two dynasties started, they were built on defense. And the defense that both organizations have used – was kind of the brainchild of these two dudes working together in the early 90s. So the basis of the story is, I believe, I think they were at the Cleveland Browns. Bill Belichick was the head coach of the Browns, and Nick Saban was his defensive coordinator. And they were pretty good, but they couldn't beat the dang Steelers, which a lot of people have had that problem, right? And, you know, the Browns got a little revenge last night for all those years, okay? They ran a 3-4 base defense, which I'll kind of talk you through here in a second. But the problem was just simply the Steeler had better players, okay? And, you know, back then, all this stuff like pattern matching and things like that didn't really exist. They weren't really part of the game. So, you know, if Saban played, you know, like a soft zone cover three kind of thing, well, you know, the Steelers would just find the holes, you know? Um, you know, the quarterback could have all day to throw the ball. Problems like that. Well, when Sigmund tries to adjust, adjust and play cover one and send pressure, well, they just get beat over the top. You know, they couldn't handle four verticals. Okay. And, and these problems and not being able to beat the damn Steelers were kind of what forced Nick Saban and Belichick to put their heads together and, and kind of reinvent how they played coverage. And the result of that was – the creation of some of the first pattern matching coverages in Rip and Liz, which is match three, and then later Saban's baby, which is a, um, a very loosely defined version of quarters called cover seven. Okay, so I'll kind of get into the coverage stuff here in a second. I want to start with the front, okay, which is also kind of innovative in and of itself. So, you know, back in the day, Bama and, and the Patriots played – they based out of a 3-4 front. And what that means – all 3-4 means is three linebackers or four linebackers in the game, three defensive linemen. That's all that really means. Okay, now how they play them and how they use their defensive linemen in particular is very different than most places. Okay, so in football, the spaces between offensive linemen are referred to as gaps. Okay, and – in essence, you know, a defense has to be gap sound. And what that means is we can't let any ball carry through that gap, okay? Now, there's multiple ways we can attack a gap, and most teams are either one or the other, right? You can either be a one-gap team, which is when you sign each defender one particular gap that they have to control, or you can be two gappers, okay? And a two-gapper – Okay, for example, if we said this nose here was going to be a two-gapper, right, he would be responsible for both A-gaps on either side of the center. Okay, and how he would do that, because he can't be in two places at once, rather than attacking his gap, he would attack the center, okay, and absolutely beat his tail and kind of steer him 
you know, where he wants them to go. And what that does is it it frees up linebackers just to make plays, right? If you have a real war daddy there at this no zero technique, like Mount Cody back in the day is who I think of with, with Alabama. And then, of course, Vince Wilfork with, with uh, the Pats. You know, that guy is going to draw double teams, and it's going to keep these backers clean, okay, in order to kind of get through there and make plays. So when you watch the pass and you watch, you know, the and you watch Alabama, when they're in this three, four front stuff, you know, they mostly two gap. Okay. And that's why, you know, it's it's great to be a linebacker at Alabama because you're going to get a lot of glory. You're going to get to make plays because these these big uglies are keeping guys off of you. Okay. So you know, most odd front teams wanted to two gap, but you know, the problem was you don't you don't really get to pick your personnel, right? You know, you do to an extent in the NFL, but you get what you get. And you know, in college you can pick to an extent, seeing as as you go out and recruit them. But again, you know, guys can always tell you no, you might miss somewhere. So you gotta make your scheme fit what you have. Okay. And the Pats kind of – well, really would be the Browns, I would say. But they kind of realized that, you know, they actually had a, a great Clemson player who Saban talks um, highly of, Michael Dean Perry. Okay, and, you know, Michael Dean wasn't really a two-gapper. Okay, he was more of a gap shooter. So what Saban did, which was absolutely brilliant, okay, and Belichick too, okay, they said, okay, we're going to be both a two-gapper and a one-gapper at the same time. Okay, so he would assign his five technique and his nose, okay, as two gappers. So they're just going to beat the crap out of the tackle, beat the crap out of the center, draw a double team, and try to try to move between these gaps, keep these backers clean. However, I put Michael Dean Perry here at a four eye, and he's a one gapper. Shoot your gap and go, Bubba. Okay, and now you can have your Sam and your Jack if you want to send them. There was one gappers as well. So it's, there's a lot of versatility in in that idea out of this three four front. Saban now is as defenses are getting more modern. Let me delete my lines. Uh, let's see. They can get they're getting into more tight fronts and mint fronts and things like that. And Saban actually nowadays in um, is I guess starting five or six years ago actually gets in a lot of even fronts too, where we can essentially make this cat a or here, yeah, make that cat a three, slide your jack in, one technique and bump him out to a five, right? So, you know, Saban has a lot of versatility in in the fronts that he can line up in, okay? But just for the sake of being simple here, we're going to stick with our um, with our odd front stuff because that's what I really think is, is very unique, all right? Now let's get into coverage because that's the real brainchild of uh, – of Nick Saban, I think. Okay. So you have a problem when, you know, when you want to play zone in the sense that you're going to give up holes, right? And it's harder to blitz because when you do blitz, you're, you're making the holes even bigger. Like the maximum, if you're going to, if you're going to play zone, the maximum amount you can send is five. And even if you do send five, you're giving up a big hole somewhere. Okay. Cause you're asking six guys, to cover the rest of the field. It's, that's just hard, okay? Um, when you play man, that frees you up to send guys all over the place, right? You can send six, I mean, sometimes even seven, just depending on what the offense is trying to do. But you're at a very distinct disadvantage in man coverage in that the receiver knows exactly what he's trying to do and the defender's guessing. So unless you just have freaking studs at you know playing corner and safety, man coverage is very dangerous. Okay, so both have clear weaknesses. Okay, so how can we find a way to play man, like cover one man when it's in our advantage to do so, but also play cover three when it's our advantage to do so and not let the offense dictate that, right? So that's kind of where Rip and Liz came from. So if you're going to play cover three, okay, so let's just say, saving like split field, but let's just say, okay, we're playing a three deep coverage. So corner, deep third, he's got from hash to sideline. Free safety, he's got from hash to hash, okay? This uh, weak side corner, whatever you want to call him, 
from hash to sideline, right? That's their deep thirds, okay? Strong safety here has a curl, work in the flat, okay? Sam here, curl, work in the flat, right? So, you know, this is all well and good. You should be really strong in coverage underneath. You should have some help in the run game. The problem is what happens if you get four verticals? You got a problem. You have three deep for four guys streaking. That's mathematically impossible, even if we do bump this guy out a bit, which they would. Okay. So simple, very simple. What Rip and Liz is, is they are teaching their guys to, uh, to read patterns. Okay. So it's almost like we've married cover three and man. So how it's going to work. Okay. Is he's got his deep third, but he's almost in a way playing man on the outside receiver and vice versa here. Okay. If we have anything that breaks off underneath, right, we're going to get cover three. Okay. Whereas this guy's going to play his, you know, his curl zone and then break to the flat. Okay. If he goes in, he's going to pass them to a backer and then he's going to work the flat, right? Watch him for the back. Okay. And backers read backs and they're calling out and communicating what they see. All right. But if we get four verticals, kind of like I got drawn up here, all of a sudden he's going to man this up. Okay. And that'll tell your backer that if the back flares to his side, okay, he's got to man him now because there's nobody here playing, uh, playing curl flat anymore. Okay. So essentially they're just adapting their coverage based on the, the concepts that the offense is running. And part of this is you got to, you really just got to rep it and teach these guys what they're seeing. Cause you know, if you do the film study part and you know, okay, they're like four verticals, they like curls and, and outs and things like whatever. Okay. Um, if they see these patterns, they learn to recognize them and, and get in the correct coverage um, very quickly. So essentially what they're doing is Saban is giving his guys the ability to, um, to adjust to what they're seeing on the fly coverage wise. Now the real genius of Saban. Okay. And you got to know, understand Saban's defensive philosophy. Let me get rid of these lines here. I absolutely hate the uh, huddle. It's a terrible tool, but it's what they pay for. All right, yeah. so Saban's philosophy really hasn't – what is it doing? Okay, really hasn't changed much over the years. He um, He's one of those guys that he is – he's going to play kind of conservatively on first and second down. He wants to stop the run. He's going to play zone or some kind of pattern match zone. Okay, now if he gets you in third and seven or longer, he's sending the heat. Okay, you can bet on it. That's just how he operates. And it seems simple, you know, but a lot of guys have, have trouble sticking to that. Okay. So his real baby to me is cover seven. All right. If cover seven is the same deal when you take cover two and cover four, right? You know, cover two gives you the ability to leave the corner kind of down here in the flat. And, you know, he's going to reroute and we're going to have, you know, each safety's got a half of the field, right? And so corners have flats. You know, your Sam, Jack, and your linebackers kind of have everything in between, right? That's just basic country cover, too. If you're talking quarters, okay, quarters allows your safeties to get heavy into the run game, okay? But now we have – each defender has a quarter, okay, of, of the deep half of the field. So it's very safe over the top, but you're giving up the flats for the most part. It's pretty hard to cover flats. Now – there's nothing wrong with that in the sense that the more times you make an offense snap the ball per drive, the more likely they are to turn it over or commit a stupid penalty or something, give up a sack, who knows? You know, it's hard to, you know, complete 16 play drives. But wouldn't it be better if we had a way where we could play cover two when it's in our best interest and play quarters when it's in our best interest and possibly even match it up and play man. Okay. And that's, that's the basis of cover seven. Now, cover seven is a beast to teach. A lot of coaches really want to learn how to do this and struggle with it. It took me a long time to figure it out. Uh, a great story on that. 
when Jeremy Pruitt took the Tennessee job, one of his first clinic stops was in South Carolina. He spoke in Charleston and I'm there sitting on the front row and his topic was actually cover seven. Okay. And you know, he goes through all the film he's using is Alabama film, right? You see Saban in his little golf hat thing he wears in his vest. You know, so one knock I got on is he think that he thinks vests are cool, whatever. Okay. And he's going through it all. And some old guy at the, at the back raises his hand and he says, coach Pruitt. So I'm expecting we're going to see some cover cover seven at Tennessee. Right. And Pruitt looks at this dude like he's freaking crazy. And he says, hell no, our kids in Tennessee can't do this. Okay. So just the fact that Nick Saban pulls this off and his kids do it well is incredible. Like the, the guy's attention to detail has got to be elite because this stuff is hard. Okay. So cover seven is a pattern matching version of quarters. Okay. And Saban has about seven or eight tags that, um, that he can play with it. And I really don't have time to go into all of them. So I'll, I'll teach you the, the main ones, which are Meg, mod and cone okay and the other beauty of cover seven is it's a it's a divorced concept where each side of the field can kind of do what they want okay so you know if they're meg over here they can be mod over here it doesn't really matter right and they make these decisions based off of game plan so you know they'll study their opponent and they'll pick what you know they want to be in mag or mod or you know, it could be down in distance situations and so on. So they probably aren't carrying every concept um, that they do into each week. Okay. So I'm going to start with Meg. That's the easiest. And so let me find a little way I could type here. I got to remember how to do it. Here we go. Let's go Meg. Meg stands for man everywhere he goes. And the general rule is if, if this guy, if we're in Meg here, okay. We're saying, hey, corner, you're manned up, okay? We're manned up, right? So we're in Meg. I don't care if he goes in the restroom and go take a crap. You're standing there in the stall with him holding toilet paper. It is locked on. You're manned, okay? And our safety's over the top. So we're almost man on, man on, and, and then we got safety, right? I mean, that's pretty simple, okay? Anything that crosses over here, okay, the backer is going to take that. Right, so he's watching for back. If back comes out of the backfield, I got him. If back doesn't, but we have some kind of crosser here, I'm going to match up the crosser. Right, Meg's really simple. Okay. Next, we have mod. Okay, and mod stands for man on demand. Okay. Now, mod, I've seen a lot of people throw picks into mod. Okay, so mod. We're telling the, the corner here, okay? We're telling the corner that we're only going to man this guy up if he goes vertical more than five yards, okay? So if I get a vertical, I'm going to man him, okay? Period, okay? If he runs like a hitch or an end, though, I'm going to get to my deep quarter and I'm, I'm going to be like a traditional quarters coverage and we're going to let the linebacker take underneath stuff. And we'll let the Sam handle that. Okay. So one example, okay. When people play quarters, a very common offensive concept that, you know, offenses like to try is the smash concept. Clemson actually hit this a lot in the national championship game a couple of years ago in 2018. But this is, mod is made to handle this stuff. Okay, so if I'm a corner and, and I'm playing mod, I can slow play this hitch, okay? Kind of sit on it, but I see, hey, he's not going more than five yards. I'm not man. I'm going to get to my deep quarter. So now we've got bracket coverage on this hitch, okay? And we're going to let this, this Sam linebacker kind of get out here and be responsible for this, okay? So we have our... Strong corner in this case would be deep quarter. Our free safety is a deep quarter. Okay. Our sandbacker is going to match up the hitch. And if anything crosses or our back flies out here, backs, the backer's got him. Okay. And we're just simply matching up the pattern. If if 
let's say we get some kind of vertical concept here. I don't know, let's say post wheel. Okay. Now our rules are triggered. We're okay, we gotta we gotta man up. Okay. And so, you know, technically he's on 10, so we're gonna bracket him. Okay, but now he's going to leave, should be able to pass this off to free safety. We should be able to carry the wheel here. He'd carry the wheel here and, and kind of pass it off. And then if anything comes underneath, right, or the back comes out, linebacker should be able to match it. Okay, and that's, that's really what Saban does is he finds multiple ways to, to fit his coverages together. So you've got two, four, and man kind of combined and cover seven here. And that's just, that is a really, 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 really basic version of cover seven. Um, I mean, there's some other X's and those guys on here, they might say, well, you're way too simple there. It's, I probably was, but um, I mean, heck, I, I really don't have all day. I mean, he's, there's there's eight versions of, of this alone. And then you get into Rip and Liz, which is map, match three stuff. He's got skate, you know. So it, it's amazing to me that Saban is able to get all this stuff taught. And I got an illegal formation here. Look at me. It's amazing to me that he gets all this stuff taught. So anyway, I'm running out of time. I've got a meeting I've got to be at. Uh, so I'm going to have to skip cone for today. Um, but anyways, I hope that kind of enlightens you guys as far as what Bama's uh, – going to be doing defensively tonight. Um, you know, it's it's kind of a guess with Saban if, if you're going to get an even or odd front. So, but you will see plenty of cover seven, even though it's really hard to tell because it can look so different every snap. You will be seeing some rip Liz. And, you know, if he can find a way to get Ohio State into uh, third and long, you can expect to see the heat come as well. So, anyways, I hope that helped. If you guys have any questions, feel free to, to post um, here. I'll answer them. I'll kind of monitor the thread as I have time. Uh, or feel free to send me a private message if you would like, and I'll try to answer as best I can. I'm, I'm sorry for being a little vague there. Um, anyways, good, good luck tonight to both uh, Bama fans and Ohio State fans. I have no ill will for you guys. You just kicked our tail. Congratulations. All right, take care.